Everybody. Okay. Calling the meeting to order. Today is Wednesday, May 17th. It's 7 p.m. Is anybody out there taping? Nobody's taping? Okay. Can we all stand up? Please silence your phones so we can have a moment of silence and say the Pledge of Allegiance.
first thing on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the Board of Directors meeting for 4-19-23. I make a motion to pass the minutes. Is there anything to discuss on it? No. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. It's unanimous. up to date on what's going on first off I apologize for the lateness of getting the agenda out we have had people in the administration office who has been out sick they came back and they're out sick again this week we also had one person already scheduled for vacation and she left us <laughs> So you all know what that means. We were short, short, and short. So um, I apologize for that. The AC, the AC is in place. Our brand new AC. It will be hooked up Friday or Saturday. They are gonna do the final inspection on it and hook it up. Okay? Yes, thank God. Gate Century. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to talk about it. <laughs> As everybody knows, it's been broke. It, it runs on a V-belt. So one side has one type of mechanism, the other side has another type of mechanism. If we were to change it out, it would be extremely costly. I spoke to the gentleman. He is coming, the part, we have actually have the UPS tracking number. The part was either be delivered today or tomorrow. He's coming Friday to hook it up. So we'll have that done. Now, the golf cart that was stolen. I called the young lady whose cart was stolen and apologized to her, because that was the right thing to do. Um, I am very sorry that that happened. We were under the impression of some other things that had taken place. I'm gonna have George explain because he was part of that conversation in which these items were supposed to be taken care of. So, George. Yeah, I had, um, we were in a meeting one day and I had asked about the cameras and I was told. Hello. Hello. I was in a meeting one day here about probably three months ago, and I was told, I had mentioned about the cameras, where were they, how come we don't have cameras on the gates? I was told they were going up, and obviously they never were put up, because if we had cameras up, we could have seen who went out through, through the gates. But the good news is, they are going up. It's already been approved to have the cameras put in, and they're going to be able to see them right in the office of where stuff goes. The same as it does with the compound, the IV compound. So that's where we're at with that. Um, we're not going to put the blame on anybody. We're just going to take care of it from there. Thank you. Thank you. We actually didn't find out about it until I had received a call from code enforcement saying where they found out where the car had went out and how it got out. So I had said, well, we're, can you look at the camera for that? And they were like, there's no camera. That's how it all came about. So we wanted to let you know how we found out about it. We were under the impression that the cameras had already been installed. So we're gonna get up with um, the electric company because we believe that we're gonna have to have some power run for some things. We know that that's gonna cost some money, but it only makes sense to spend the money on these gates and have them done correctly 
because there's no sense in having the front gate secure when everything else can be in and out in a heartbeat. So I wanted to tell everybody about that, how we found out about it, and that we thought it was already in place and it wasn't, and that we're gonna correct it. And we will have a bill for it, but we think it's well worth it, okay? The lawsuit that we have just settled, um, Jim is gonna get up and explain the lawsuit to everybody since it has to do with a substantial sum of money that each one of you are going to have to pay for this. And we will take questions at the end with members' comments, which I know you will have, but we want to give you all the information that we have right now. Thanks, Debbie. Can everyone hear me? Hi, can everyone hear me? Uh, the, there was a lawsuit that had originated back in 2017. It finally saw its conclusion on May the 8th when uh, Brookridge, as well as the plaintiffs, were the defendants in this action and there were the plaintiffs, where both parties accepted a non-binding arbitrator's award. And let me give you the highlights of it. There were four different claims. Um, and this, this is all available through public records, so anyone who wants to look for further information is welcome to do that. The four claims were for Mr. Whelan, discrimination under the federal and Florida Fair Housing Acts, intentional infliction of emotional distress. For the real estate Florida group, Tortoise is, I think that's how you pronounce it, interference with a business relationship, and with Mr. Thorpe, defamation, defamation against brokerage. Those are the four claims that those parties had uh, levied against Brookridge. The four outcomes, the two for Mr. Whelan, he was awarded zero for discrimination under the Florida Federal Fair Housing Act, but 10,000 for emotional infliction, intentional infliction of emotional distress. For the real estate group, the award was $21,000, and for Mr. Thorpe, defam defamation against Brookridge, 10,000. So the grand total is 41,000. Many of you are probably wondering, well, was any of that covered under our insurance? And the answer is yes, about 15,000 was, so that leaves Brookridge essentially on the hook for 26,000. Where are we gonna come up with that money? Great question. Uh, somebody would probably wanna ask that, so I'll save time. Um, it's gonna come out of the operating budget. Currently, we have enough to cover that. What we'll probably do is each month, we put $52,700 from operating into reserves. We do that for 10 months. Uh, my plan is for June to not do that. So we're doing it January through through um, May, five months, and then we'll do an additional five months, July through November, still meeting the requirements of 10 payments, and there should be uh, enough funds to cover that 26,000. I do wanna read just a couple little blurbs from the arbitrator was a retired judge in Hernando County, a 30-year uh, employee. Um, and these are just a couple of comments that I want people to maybe think about and for, for no particular reason other than just for your thoughts and if you have questions. Um, against uh, one gentleman's claim, the comment was, to subject someone to this obvious mental slow, with his obvious mental slowness to such distress is both extremely unkind and legally improper. The behavior of the agents and employees of Brickridge towards Scotty could have been used, handled much more civilly. That's one comment. Another comment is, this is for the real estate group, the evidence seems overwhelming that it was illegally interfered with its business relationship. Many letters, legal actions, and overt acts seem to be purely retaliatory towards this company. And then the last comment that I'll read um, that the arbitrator wrote, Mr. Thorpe was definitely defamed individually. So the um, insurance company paid a portion of the $41,000. They apparently agreed that there was some deliberate or malice or I'm not sure what the right adjective is. Purposeful, thank you, um, on Brookridge's part. So what do we do for the future with the theory that we're gonna look forward and not look back? I think we just need to make better decisions as, as a board and as employees here and we'll just keep bringing that up. So those are the highlights. The um, and again, it is available uh, as a public record. So if you hey, want to have more questions, you're welcome to do that. I may be able to answer some. You're welcome to see me after the meeting.
Thank you. Just to make a comment on that, the day that this was scheduled, um, there was a jury that was going to be convened in Hernando County. I can tell you leading up to this, I can say this for us here on the board, when we get a call and we put out for litigation, it means that we have a problem that we have to discuss. We're not going there to hide anything from anybody. Okay? We have a legitimate claim that we need to discuss. Whether it be somebody's going into foreclosure or something like that, you would not want us to discuss that in public. That's not fair. But I can honestly tell you that this particular case has weighed heavily on all of our minds here. And we, there was many nights where we didn't sleep well and got up the next morning and called each other because we knew we were gonna face a jury and that jury could have returned any verdict. And that verdict could have left us with a special assessment. We were even calculating amounts that a jury could come back on. Could have left us with a special assessment or even worse. So we thought that the offering to agree to settle to this amount versus an unknown amount that a jury could return was the absolute best decision that we could make financially for the community. So I want everybody to know that we really thought about this. It was a very difficult decision for us. We were very, very nervous and very scared. So we're glad it is over and we have to now move forward. But when it comes to members' comments, whatever comments you have, we'll gladly try and answer them. De Debbie, to add to that, um, by doing the arbitration, it gave us a, a, a rare look as to what the other parties were to say in court. So we had a chance to see what their arguments were and that weighed into the decision-making process. Jim, did you want to go on with your treasurer's report since you're already... Sure, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you'll notice on the treasurer's report there's some new categories. One is uh, operating balance beginning is now added on there. In this case, it's, uh, it's unavailable. And the reason I put it's unavailable, I could have put the number from last month, but I didn't believe it to be correct. I still don't believe it to be correct. And I wanted to put a number that I knew was good. The operating balance that we have now for the... Um, start the ending of April is 488,084.43. That amount is accurate to the penny. I checked with all of the banks and locations that we have any kind of money. That's our operating balance and it's an accurate number. As is the operating interest, which is a new category as well. That's just below that. $879.71 is our operating interest just for the month of April. Jump, jump down a little further to the reserve area you'll see interest in two different categories, month-to-date and year-to-date. The month-to-date interest for April was 967, year-to-date is 3,096.52. For when you add both year-to-date uh, interest in, we've earned $5,554.48 in total interest, whether it's operating or reserve. So, and that is, an, again, another number that's accurate to the penny. The uh, ending balance for the donated funds, that number is incorrect. It was listed at 28869. The real true number, again, to the penny is 28,609.54. So it's close, but going forward, we will have accurate numbers for the three categories, operating, reserve, and donated funds. They will be accurate to the penny because we'll be checking them. We have access either by telephone or online to check our balances on the 30th, so we'll know exactly to the penny how much we have. You'll notice in the center of the report operating expenses, there's a couple unavailables. The numbers for the monthly charges, which total 82,926.55, which is down from 128, 128,000 the month before. We believe those numbers to be reasonably accurate, but the, the year-to-date totals were not, and that's why it says unavailable. I don't want to put numbers here that are not accurate. In my humble opinion, I want them to be accurate as they can be, and if they're not ridiculously close, I want to put them as unavailable. This is a work in progress. The, the, the treasurer's report has been kind of out of whack for a while. I'm not going to be able to fix it overnight, but this is the first steps in that, in that process. 
Any any questions that anyone has? In the back. How much did we How much did we How much did we actually lose? Uh, to the prior members. Do we have any figure on that? We never heard anything. Yeah. As far as the funds that were said they couldn't make um, couldn't make right, they didn't know what that figure was and we yeah. never got a, a figure I, on I that. I don't have that as a table. Okay. But that's not been unavailable for a while. I'm, I'm, work, okay. I'm working on it. What, what I have to ask is that this is a very complicated process. It, it's the numbers haven't been correct for a while. I, I'm not here to point any fingers at anybody. We're looking again. We're looking forward. There's a reason. I work for Ford. There's a reason why the windshield is 30 times bigger than the rearview mirror. You're looking forward, not back. Um, and, and it's a work in progress. There was another question. Where is our money? Our money is in. Um, I'll, I'll give you the highlights. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you exact numbers. Okay, then we won't do that. <laughs> we have a new account at Truist Bank. That's where we're going to have reserve money. We have a new account at Regions Bank. There's 210000 exactly in there for that's our reserve money in Truist. I'm sorry, in Regions. We also have money in Cap City, which is right up the street. Across the street is Brennan. And in Edward Jones, we have 11 different CDs ranging from 4.85 to 4.95 with various... Um, expiration dates. One is uh, somewhere in July, those were three monthers, some were six monthers, and I just recently purchased two two years that pay interest monthly. So it was a great deal. It, you get interest every month rather than waiting for two years, which who wants to wait two years? And the rate was 4.85 on the first group I bought and 4.9 on the second group. That's after the Fed raised the discount rate last week. You bet. I want to talk to everybody about, if I can keep talking about money, which is, is my favorite topic. Uh, we've also got an account at a bank called TIA Bank, which I did not mention. There's 199320 in there, so almost 200 grand. Here's the problem. It was a CD that was automatically renewed in February. It wasn't something we did, it was just automatically renewed. Well, say, oh, great, you got a CD. Well, that's the good news. The horrible news is the rate is 2.37, so the rate is just terrible. We have two choices, and I spoke with probably four different people and a manager. Our two choices are to leave it in there for the next three, almost three full years and collect 2% and be disappointed, or we can withdraw and take an early penalty of $3,528. And people are thinking, $3,500, are you insane? Why would you pay that much money just to get our money back? Well, let me give you the math real quick. In the first year, if... <laughs> <laughs> they got his talking to me. Uh, in the first year, if we did in fact do that, we took the money out, paid the penalty, and reinvested it at 4.9, we would get back $1,514, and that's to the good. The interest that we would have earned at 2.37 is 4,700. The penalty is 3,500. That's 82.52. We would have earned 97.66, which means we would earn 1,500 for years two and three. It's 5,042 for the second year and 5,042 for the third year. So we would get 11,599.71 if we did that transaction. So my question to the group is: Is there any reason not to do that other than taking the $3,000 hit? So your recommendation would be to do that. And I guess I'd like to make a motion that we in fact do that tomorrow, if that's okay with the board. I second. I second. All in favor? Okay. Problem solved. And I can't overlook, too, the hard work that the Finance Committee, because we have a full-time Finance Committee on board. If, if, does, if anyone does want to see what we have invested, where, and where the dollar is, I keep a running tab, for example, with Edward Jones. I can tell you which 11 banks we have money in. Uh, some of them are banks that nobody ever heard of. The little bank in Green Bay, who, who knows? 
But there's also Wells Fargo, which is one of the two big to fail banks. Goldman Sachs, also a two big to fail bank. So there's a cross section. We're trying to spread out so that we never are close to that 250 amount. I did get an inquiry from one of the members saying, why do you have so many accounts in different places? Why don't you just put 249 in, in each bank? I'm uncomfortable doing that, to, to be honest. It's, it's, not, it's not the best decision. It's more work. And that was his point. Well, you're creating more work for yourself. Well, yeah, that's what we're here to do. You didn't pick me to be a treasurer not to do any work. So uh, if anyone who wants to see where the money is, I'll have it in a moment's notice, and you're welcome to come see it anytime. I even have it tonight if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And since Carol's not here, we'll just move on. Okay, thank you. All right. Unfinished Business um, Traffic Safety Committee. I'm going to go ahead real quick um, and read just, just in case nobody picked it up. But this was from the, um, our workshop. And we tabled it so that we could consider it, we could go look at it and see exactly what was going on. But it was recommendations to the BCPO Board of Directors to put on the agenda for the next BCPO workshop. We're here now at the board meeting. Requesting to establish of a no parking zones on both sides of the roadway over the crest of the hill at Dinsmore Street and Cedar Cove Ave. Okay. So I am making a motion to install the new par uh, the no parking zones on both sides of the roadway over the crest of the hill at Dinsmore Street and Cedar Cove Ave. Does anybody have anything they want to say? Discussion? Just to, uh, one quick thing, Deb. There is on the on the traffic that travels westbound. There are signs. If you look at the map that was in, if you have this copy. It's right where the O is in Country Club and the U is in Club. There are actually two signs going westbound, so there would be two new signs going eastbound. The problem with the westbound signs is they're so faded you can't even read them. So we need four new signs, even though two are in place. And it is uh, roughly 80 paces from the top of the crest. So if you walk 80 steps or 80 meters or 80 yards one way and go 80 the other, that's approximately where the signs would be. It encompasses, I think, five homes. And I can just say that I travel country club coming up to the clubhouse a few times a week. I had been stopped on country club because there was somebody stopped with their emergency lights on. Fine, I had stopped. It just so happens that Tracy from traffic safety was coming the other way. I did not know it was her at the time and stopped and spoke to the lady. But even if that lady was not there, I did not feel okay pulling out to pull across because I was at that crest and I couldn't see anybody coming. And if they were coming up or a golf cart or something, it would have been quite serious. So that's when I realized we have a really serious issue right at that location. So I just wanted to tell everybody what I had experienced at that location. Anybody else? Motion to approve the no parking signs. Jim. <laughs> okay. George. Did you say? Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimously approved. We have, um, I have one other thing for um, new business. I know it says none, but it didn't have to be put on the agenda. And I had brought this up when we were having our meet and greet. I wanted to establish a code of ethics for the board, for the present board and any future board. Something that we should live by and something that 
is not asking a whole lot of a board, but for honesty, for transparency, things along that line. So I thought it was really important that we establish something. And I wanted to make a motion tonight to establish a code of ethics for the present board and future board. Do I have any discussion on that? Second, George, second. Do I have a vote? Aye. Aye. Unanimously passed, Arlene. Okay, thank you. Right, and we don't have any, um, Millie, did you have anything you wanted to say about your um, experience you've had so far with the um, public works and with uh, finding the signs and with anything with your, um, your other signs that you brought up? Okay. Okay, um, just bear with me. Don't get your knee replaced, okay. Um, you're not kidding. <laughs> Okay, I have been working, um, today I had a meeting with uh, Tracy, not Tracy, um, Lucy and Billy from Public Works. Um, I asked him when he found some time to let me know how many signs he has as far as stop signs, speed signs, whatever he has down in his Public Works department. Um, I'm going to establish a sign inventory with Billy because there are, um, many areas in this community and we're going to go unit by unit there's signs that are up that should not be up um there's signs that are so faded that need to be replaced and in order to do this you have to have the money you have to have an inventory being a former public works director i dealt with that for 20 something years what i am asking billy to do is get, gather all this information, and I also am requesting through Tracy, our traffic safety coordinator, that she would have him come to the next traffic safety meeting, because if anybody knows about the signs and everything in this community, it's him. Because you'll hear, well, no, maybe it should go there. Maybe, the, no, you, you can't put a sign anywhere you think you, you want to. You, can, you just can't do it. Our primary is stop signs, evacuation signs and speed signs that's all we should be concerned about in this community never mind because somebody in the past brother all lived over there they wanted a sign that doesn't go you can't do it this this is a big community and the signs have to be where they're supposed to be because if they're not and something happens who do you think they're going to sue well wait a minute where, show me where that's show me where that's at so um Along with Tracy, the head of traffic safety, and Billy, Public Works, we're gonna we're gonna get all the signage to where it's supposed to be in this community. There's so many signs you, you don't know. Speed signs, stop signs. It's too much. The community has too many signs. I I don't have words here. Yes, dear. Can we have one about ten feet on me? Well, right, right now your stop signs, if, if you look at your different streets, you have a stop sign basically at, at the end of each street. Yep. Now you also have, we have a situation on Admiral and Fortune Hunter. Right on the corner, the sign is put back on, onto their property, which has been there for a long, long time. But in order to move that where it's supposed to be, you have to have you have to have a utility mark out because you don't know what your underground utilities. You just can't take a sign and take it out of the ground and put it someplace else. So God forbid you hit it. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking for a ten foot sign so people actually stop. And where's this at? Midmore and Rialto. They don't know what stop signs are. Well, I can't say that we could, but. We can certainly take a look at what you're talking about, and if it's if it's possible, or Tracy from Traffic Safety, bail me out here. <laughs> oh. 
Tracy McCumber, uh, Unit 2, Traffic Safety. Um, I'd just like to let everybody know, um, before we get too deep into this, on May 30th at 7 p.m., we're going to have a, a town hall for the traffic safety of the community. Is, um, it's for you, so you can come and tell us what we need. Y'all live out there, you know what's going on, so it's going to be a, a town hall, and we expect um, some great things to happen. We're working on a lot of stuff. Just be patient. It's a new committee, um, and we have a lot of support total support from the board and I commend them and thank them for everything they've done thus far. But May 30th, mark your calendar, 7 p.m. And all your concerns, if you need a stop sign, you got speeders, which would be hmm, interesting. We all have speeders. So we're going to address pretty much everything we can at that meeting and we'll take everybody's concerns and advice. So um, I just want to let you know. So if you have questions, just save them for then and we'll see you then, okay? Thank you. I also am the chairperson for the development committee, so I'm going to just speak on that real quickly. Um, we uh, were asked to do an update for our new retail center going out in front over here. I'm going to have to look at my notes. Uh, I'm going to start with a, they did a traffic study, Hernando County did a traffic study that is complete. They are collecting all the data that they have. Um, done and they will come up with any provisions if we need our roads widened, if we have enough uh, right-of-ways, um, etc. So that's underway with the county, so just so you know that. Um, the next thing is our sign. The sign will stay where it is. It will not be affected, and I know that was a concern for a lot of people. Next is the landscape um, barrier or buffer, whatever you want to call it. What we have now will stay intact. Um, we're just going to add to what we currently have. There's a cyclone fence there, and there's foliage there. Um, what we're going to do, or they, the developer, is going to, um, they've submitted a landscape plan to the county, which will all be approved again. They'll put in more trees, more foliage, and create an opaque barrier um, between our community and uh, the retail center. So, um, again, there's going to be a lot of questions, and I will get with the developer um, quite soon, and hopefully we can get him back here, and he can answer more specifics. Yes, sir. Do you know how tall the barrier is going to be? Yeah, they can range from, it'll be what there is now, but they'll stack the trees, so we'll start, you know, low, and they'll go up maybe to 30 or whatever they are now. I don't actually know what the current is, but it will create a barrier. They've actually found, and I did a lot of research in the beginning on the walls and the PVC walls and all those they really don't create a great sound barrier. They reverberate, so you get more sound. So they found that actually trees and foliage are the best barrier for sound, especially up against this. So also um, the lighting and the noise, um, that has been uh, taken over by Hernando County. There's all stipulations. The county does all of this. They have to approve that there is not going to be excess noise, excess lighting. Everything is approved by the county to be sufficient for a residential living area as well. Um, hold on, let me get my notes. And you guys can ask questions after, but um, again, I'll, I'll get the developer here at some point when we get further into this. Um, hold on. Uh, golf cart access to the new development is something that's been approved by the county. Um, will it come to fruition? It, there's a lot going on with it. There's um, cost that will be incurred. There'll be uh, a lot of runways. It might not even be feasible as far as financially. We don't know, but we're gonna leave that up to the developer to see if we can, we've actually been negotiating with him to uh, see if he can help with the cost if that does come to fruition for the gate. And it'll be a real asset because it will be for bicycles, pedestrians, and golf carts to get in and out of the community through its own separate gate. So that's in the works as well. Yeah, and I don't know that. Yeah, uh, Christine asked if we'll need to register golf carts. Um, I don't know what the stipulations are, but I will find out from the county and let you know. I'm not really absolutely sure. And I don't want to, if I don't know for sure, I'm not going to say. Um, I guess in concluding, um, it's estimated, and this is verbatim, uh, the site construction may begin in the fall of 2023. 
to the spring of 2024. It means they'll have shovels in the ground. Um, it's just a rough estimate, um, and because of the way um, the variables go, it could be sooner, it could be later. So just want to keep you up to date. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Tracy. Um, one, of the, one of the big things that my concern about the development, it's going to go in either way. They bought the land here and square. They own it. My biggest concern um, was a delayed time for uh, ambulance and fire trucks to get into the neighborhood to assist people in here. That is my biggest concern. Everything else, it is what it is, but my biggest concern is those fire trucks that come over from Barclay coming in here with the amount of increased traffic, increased lanes for them to get in here and assist our residents in the same time fashion that they already are. So we, me and Tracy had had a, quite a bit discussion on that and that was one area that was definitely gonna also be looked in too. So just wanted to let you all know about that. And Hernando County is responsible for anything before our gates. So once you hit our gates, you go outside our gates, that's then Hernando County. So it's really their responsibility and this isn't their first rodeo, so they'll get it right. And Debbie and I did have concerns, and I didn't even think about it. So there's going to be a lot. They're going to improve the roadways, and I think, and I don't know for a matter of fact, but they're talking about making Barclay a four-way street coming. And I don't know when that's going to happen or if it's going to happen, but there's been talk of that. So they'll increase the um, our streets coming into Brookridge. We'll probably have a two-turn lane coming in. So there's a lot of things that are going on, but again, a lot of it is speculation. I don't know as a matter of fact, so we'll have to wait and see until I get more information and we'll get up to date. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. I'm going to start first with the comments. Right, so you don't. And Paul, you're all set with you too? Okay, so. Okay, all right. So I only have one here for Gil, and um, and then we can start with member comments. But Gil wants to speak on the um, Veterans uh, Committee Memorial Day. Gail Lines are in Unit 4. Um, Memorial Day is uh, we're pretty well set. And my right in is uh, Dick uh, Terry O'Mea. We've been working together. I put this all together. It's on uh, Monday, May 29th. It starts at 8.15 in the morning with donuts and coffee, which have been provided. So everything that we provide for food is free to you. And if you want to make a donation to the, to the Veterans Committee, please do. We, we won't uh, say no. Uh, it starts at 9 o'clock in the morning outside by the big flagpole. They do a ceremony out there. And then we move inside and we have a ceremony. We have videos. We have music kids doing music. We also have uh, the color guard, the military. Oh God, and also the tribute to different veterans. Uh, the other thing that's important that we need to understand is this is the veterans that have passed away. The, these are not, Veterans Day is actually is for the veterans that are alive and still here. These, these here are a veteran that has passed on in, in many ways, whatever it was, if it was uh, during combat, or was after combat, whatever, they're, they're passed on. So uh, what happens there is we have speakers that are going to come in and speak uh, different materials. Uh, we do have a gentleman that we're going to introduce to, uh, to the folks that is going to have his 100th birthday. He is uh, with, uh, he's with World War II. Uh, he was at Normandy. The whole idea is uh, 
we're trying to get as many veterans in here that we can. Right now, he's the only one I have on record. On record, remember. There may be somebody out there, I've been 203, but I'm not aware of it. So this is the only one we're aware of. So uh, this is what we're here for. We're here to recognize the folks that have fought for this country, that have fought for our freedom, that everybody is able to come up here and speak their mind and, and, uh, and also misbehave if they have to. You know? <laughs> so to make a long story short, I uh, wish everybody show up. Uh, we're expecting, we're trying to bring in at least 250 to 300 people. So please come. The hot dogs are free. They're going to be cooked by the men's club. And we're going to have the young Marines that are going to be serving you. And they'll be proud to do so. Dick, you want something? No, good. You all set? No, I'm good. Oh, good. So thank you, folks. <laughs> We're going to open it up for member comments. Please, if you come up, please be nice to Arlene. She's the only one here. Make sure you give your name and your unit number. And Mike has the YouTuber people. Yeah. So. Okay, one thing, people, when you're speaking, we're streaming and we're recording. You need to go up and use the microphone. The people up side can't hear you so if you please if something like with Tracy you know approach her ask for the link uh, I do have a couple of questions uh, one is for the first one's for Jim uh, the question is how much do we pay in fees to Edward Jones zero fees there's no charge we like, we like zero it's a good, good number for us there, there are no fees for those CDs whether it's in the CD or the money market either entity is zero fees Okay. Uh, I have another question. Speaking of signs, are we required to stop the stop sign at the outbound gate? Yes, so that the gate can come up, so that you don't hit the gate. I think it. Well, right, right now, but, <laughs> but right now we are asking people to go slow, and it is a stop sign, so it's legally to stop and proceed in case something's going on, you know, out there. Oh, yeah. And another question was, how can you add something not on the agenda and vote? I'm not up in my Roberts. I think the, think the ethics. Oh, the right. ethics. Well, we, we thought it was something that we needed to put on there. We've been wanting to, and like I had said at the beginning, we had people that were out sick in the office. We had Arlene left us. Yeah, five days. Uh, we had that person come back and leave again. So we were kind of short-handed. I did not really think putting this off for another month was a good idea. I thought we could work, work on it, establish it, and come back with a rough draft for the next meeting. And it had no effect on money, on rules, on um, anything that affected anybody uh, resident-wise. So that's why. That's all. That's Do you have anything else? Okay. All right, member comments? Um, you want to just start going row by? Okay. Three. Three minutes. Mary Story Unit 6. Um, these questions are in reference to the lawsuit that we just settled. I know Debbie you may not be able to answer them tonight. I have them written down, but hopefully you can get us back some answers in, by the next meeting. Was there any court cost incurred to us in this lawsuit? Because we know it's 41000 but that's not the, really the true number for this whole suit, if you think about it. So did we have court costs? I, I believe we will have some court costs, some attorney costs, let me rephrase that, when there was discussions with our primary attorney, Steve, and the attorney for State Farm. I believe the attorney for State Farm, there was no 
direct charge to us. I have not seen a single bill for a single dollar from that attorney. Okay, that was my next question. Are there attorney fees? Do we have an umbrella policy? And if so, what is the amount of it? Because I'm assuming if we had an umbrella policy that it may have covered these additional charges and it wouldn't fall onto the residents? We, we do have an umbrella policy. I don't know the, um, the limit on it. And if it wasn't something that was, what was the word again, Deb? Purposeful, malice, deliberate, it probably would have been covered. They, so because it was malice and deliberate, they're not they covering is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And can at some point you give us the full financial impact of the lawsuit on the Burbridge community, everything inclusive, court cost, attorney fees, so we know the magnitude of what it truly was because of what happened? That, that, that will be possible for, for example, for this year, but since 2017, I'm not sure there's any way I could get, of, of any discussion that we had with an attorney and, and somebody either on the board or somebody in the community, I'm not sure how we would get you that number. I'm not wondering if the attorney's office would be gave, give, you, to give you an itemized bill of the court, of the court, of the charges for this. They might. So you might want to be check with them. I'd be happy to check. If you're looking at going back seven years, that's a long time. It could also be a lot of money. It, it could be. Our, our our situation is good or bad. We in, we inherited this case. Absolutely. We resolved it, and Absolutely. I, can, I can give you the expenses that we have direct. 2023 expenses. Okay, one last question. I know my time went off, but um, is there any feasibility that the parties involved in this lawsuit that we can bring a civil suit as a community against those parties that were involved in this, the Burbridge parties? I did ask our attorney, Mr. Matzo, that exact question. This was his response. Because that employee was underneath us, we are ultimately responsible for their actions and we absorb them. And, and, Mary, and, and I think what that it leads to is what I said earlier. We need to make better decisions. We need to make good, simple, smart decisions so this doesn't happen again. It happened, I, we can't and I can't change that. But what we can change is what happens tomorrow and days going forward. We need to make it's real simple, and, and I said this when I ran for the board and did meet the candidates. There's right and there's wrong. There is no in-between. There really isn't. So either do it right or don't do it. And I think we all have to be more aware of the circumstances what brought this suit on so it doesn't happen to us again, because it is costly to the development. Thank you guys for a great job. Thank you. Hi, Vivian Blair, Unit 4. I have a request. It's great that you people are standing up and coming up to the podium, but short people in the back can't see you. Is it possible for you to go back up on the stage like it was years ago so we can see you? Well, we actually asked that, but we have two members, one that had a recent surgery and one that is unable to climb stairs. And we do not have a ramp in the back where they can use it. But we, we brought that up to go back up there. So. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Harrison, come on down. The first question is, Gail Metcalf was president. I donated money for a wreath to be placed each Memorial Day out at the flagpole. It was done the first year and has never been done thereafter. What happened to that wreath I paid for? Do you know? I didn't even know you had paid for a wreath. It was special. a donation that they asked me for. An actual wreath. Right. A stand right. to be put there. And it was done. Sweetie, it's been, it did, after that, it was done the first year when Gail was, 
and since then it hasn't been done. Well, I just wrote it down, and we will definitely ask her. Um, maybe there might be a you know we keep our flag poles for the Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and everything else on top. Just asking. Mike, Mike can check that for you. Mike, okay. Check. Second question is. I know it's on the, it was, I didn't do it on the agenda, the, the no parking zone. What happens if people park there after they mark it all out? How are we gonna enforce it? Code enforcement. Code enforcement. Maybe, but Paul, it should be a violation just like any, like you're speeding or running a stop sign. It's no parking, it's critical, again, it's one of those crystal clear, there's no so, way between. There is no parking between. This sign and yeah. that sign. And they well, let's say if somebody parks there, will the resident call up the gate and tell them? Yeah, they could. They, they could call up or the code enforcement goes, I mean, that's a very busy road that code enforcement goes by all the time. I'm just asking that question. They, sh they, should, they should be um, patrolling that area. And once the signs are up, I'll ask them to do that specifically. Third question is, I asked Carol this question a couple months ago, and she says they have not, because the court was not final. What and the quarter is over. What is what? What has it cost us for the attorney that Anna hired in January? CPA, the new CPA. She said she wouldn't know until the quarter was up, which would have been March. We haven't got a bill. Okay. For it. She said she killed, couldn't give a report until the quarter was up. Right, I don't think I don't think the CPA has finished that. Well, she says he bills us by the quarter. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. I just run it up. I see it's right, we haven't, we haven't Paul, Paul, I haven't, signed any I haven't, checks. I haven't seen any bills from uh, the CPA. If I do, it's something I'll bring up to, to not only to you, but to the finance committee. Yeah. And we'll share with the whole member. Okay, I'll just ask you. My last quick question is, the gate, it's been broken out for a month, the outgoing gate. We paid 25000 for these two gates. The gate's been broken more than what they've been in service. If you look at the uh, P&L report, January to April, the, we've paid over $4,700 on maintenance so far. We budgeted for the year $2,000. So maintenance have cost us more than we actually budgeted for this. And we still don't have any gate yet. Do you know are we gonna get this gate? Well Paul, I will say this. That gate has really been broke since October. Yeah. It's not run right. And nobody messed with it. The eye was gone, it needs to be hooked up. We kept buying an eye every time we had a maintenance. Or a power surge, it would blow it out. So we've got the eye now, it needs to be replaced. But the whole problem is that we got one company coming in and we got another company going out on the gate. That's where it's at. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that to me is, um, we're trying to do the best we can with it right now, but it's gotta be, a, it's gotta be, we're gonna have to make a decision. I mean, it seems people are coming in, I mean, I'm getting calls about it now that people, oh, somebody's come to my house. But they never showed up. But they're getting to saying that they did come to their house. Right. You know, that's a problem, and we're going to have to deal with that. going next to me. I wrote a letter to uh, code enforcement uh, that are inept. Okay. Uh, I still haven't got an answer back. I wrote two letters. I wrote one in Jan uh, January and I wrote another one last week uh, for all the violations. They, 
in the last two weeks they poured the driveway, that's it. Okay, you stay in my house, you look, you look up at, this, at the driveway, I'm gonna get all the water runoff out of the cabin. I got a six inch drain in the back that's full of sand. Uh, pictures have been taken, people have looked at it, inspected it. Uh, at this point, I would think that moratorium on construction is, is appropriate because uh, code enforcement is not doing their job, so maybe somebody needs to come into code enforcement that has a clue. Maybe an engineer, maybe somebody that's done construction. There's nobody on that board that has construction background. None. Zip, zero, none. These are the people that are dictating policy to this community. Do I want to get involved? I'm going to get involved until this house is done or out of there. Okay, one or the other. So that's that's my only comment. Uh, thank you for your time. You know, Don, we work together on this. We've been talking a lot about this. And yes, there is problems there. And yes, you have drains out plugged. Six inch lines, correct? Or four inch, six inch. That plug right solid in it. And my feeling is, and I'm going to put it out there, it should not be at your expense to clean them out. It should be at the homeowner that where the dirt came from. There was never up in the barricade, in the, um, the barriers weren't up. Water went over the other thing. We, I went down there. Don's vehicles were completely covered with sand from where it's blowing. And that's not right. And we need to do yeah. And all I can say is I'm trying. And I know that doesn't pay the bill. I think if you give me one second. Uh, there's a disconnect between code enforcement, brokerage, and accounting. There's a disconnect because they're both pointing fingers at each other. And code enforcement goes, well, it's not my issue, that's the county issue, because they're going inspection. But yet there's a big B hanging in a window. That means that brokerage approved that. Okay? Just in case the audience doesn't know what's going on, that permitted by the county was a 52-foot house. What's sitting there is a 65-footer. That's what's, that's what's sitting there. It was permitted for 52 feet. You think I'm pissed? Oh, hell yeah. You know? And just like we had discussed this before, um, the house was came in before we had taken over. We had found out that there was a covered porch on the back that was supposed to be there. That porch then changed to a room. So therefore, it became a change in the square foot of the house. We know that, but by that time, the house came in in January, January 27th, the end of January, we knew it was there, you could see it, but we couldn't do anything until, and find out stuff until we came on in March. We did find out, I called to the city, got them to explain it. But by that point in time, it was too late. They, the, they had put in for a revision at the county, it was approved. They put in some paperwork at brokerage, it was approved. We do agree that there is a disconnect and we are working on a resolution that we think will solve a lot of these issues that we're having. But I do agree that that drain, I know about the drain. I've seen the other part, the slope going down, the sand going down, I've seen that. I've been by there several times and he does need a he does need to correct all those items and we will be talking again george with code enforcement again tomorrow morning but i can tell you every time that you have brought something up to us we have been by there looked at it i know millie has been by there and looked at this house several times 
We've looked at it. I've got pictures on it when George goes by. So I want you to know that we're not ignoring the house, but there's only so much that we can do with the time that we have to do it in. My, my two comments, one is every day that nothing's done, we're closer to the rainy season, okay? And so the, the issue is just gonna compound itself because there's no sod, it's not landscape. The, the other issue is um, if there was a revision and bear with me here, anytime I've done construction and there's a change, then it goes to the homeowners on both sides to approve that revision. He were, when it went from a 52 to a 65, both my, my house, my resident, and the other ones on the other side, Jim and Cheryl, should have been notified of the revision. We weren't. Well, that goes back to our ACC. But I can tell you this, and like we said, we cannot go backwards, we can only move forward. At the time, the code enforcement person who was here, who is no longer here, had stated to them that as long as it didn't change the square foot, that it was actually okay. But it did, so, they gave the okay, and here we are. Yeah, this, is, this, is some of the, this is some of the things that we're dealing with now. It's like with a lawsuit, and stuff has been done, it's been going on for two or three years, and now we're the ones that's gonna have to try to clean it up. And I agree with you, Bill. Something needs to be done. And start dragging. Well, I, I think there should be a moratorium on construction. Everyone stops in this community and until you can figure this deal out because every day is one day closer to the rainy season and I'm going to get flooded again. I've never had a drop of water in that lower uh, RV park and I had four inches in there when it, when it drain plugged up. Four inches. Okay? I don't need that. I don't need this crap in my yard. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. But when we all came in and talked about that with the ACC, when we sat down with Harry, Paul, you and I, and Tim, um, they didn't know. They, Harry and them did, did not know. Once they, once they approved what they approved, then it goes to code enforcement, then we don't know where it goes. It was being held. And finally we got the paperwork out. And I can't study and say we're gonna, we can blame the ACC, because we can't. I think it was prior problems that we need to get it straightened out now. I appreciate your time, but uh, I'm just, on a daily basis, I deal with it. to the board, the first thing we were going to do was eliminate the sheriff, and we did, because we felt it was, it created a contentious environment, and we think that we can be adults, we can agree to disagree sometimes, but we feel that we have been very transparent in everything that we're doing, and we've noticed that the meetings are going uh, much better, everybody seems to be... It seems to be a more community 
and I guess if you guys are very smart and you know you come to the meetings like with the safety committee and I just want us as residents to have the same respect for you as you have for us. And like if you give respect, you get respect. And that's what we said from the forefront that we were gonna do. And if we feel that somebody is is not respectful, then we will stop them and, and we may even have to ask them to leave and we're prepared for that in the future should that may happen. I, I just, you know, it shouldn't just be on your side. It be, that's true. Thank you. Thank you. Ron? Sandy, what did you have in there? Be honest. Red Bulls. Yeah, sure. That is not Red Bull. It might be red, but it ain't a bull. Ron Ross, you did six. Uh, speak a little bit on behalf of the, the Golf Association tonight. Uh, I wanted, uh, and I had a conversation a little bit ago with you, Debbie, and I wanted to let everybody in Brookridge know that the Golf Association is bringing in uh, Hidden, Creek, Hidden Creek Golf Carts uh, on June the 8th. And they'll be in the west parking lot. They're going to have canopy, We're encouraging everybody that has a golf cart that wants to inspect it to bring it over. It's a free, there's no charge for it. Uh, they will inspect the golf cart, let you know if there's any problems with it, what the problems are, uh, and, and if they can be taken care of, or just one day they'll be able to answer your questions. That's for all the Brookridge residents, not, not just golfers. Uh, second thing, we still have the food truck every Tuesday night uh, up in the golf course parking lot. It's for all of Brookridge. Uh, got anything from pulled pork to brisket to hamburger uh, to ribs. Next week, there's going to be a special. Uh, either of you told me about it, we're going to have 10 wings and fries, 12 bucks. Uh, that'll be the special next Tuesday night. Go from 3 to 6 out there. The last thing is, uh, the, the Golf Association has started having a hospitality membership uh, that allows non-golfers that are residents of Brookridge to purchase for $35 a year um, a, a hospitality membership that allows them to come into the clubhouse, uh, purchase uh, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, uh, cold sandwiches, drinks, uh, buy any kind of beer you want, uh, and, and mixed drinks uh, anytime the clubhouse is open. So that's $35 a, a year if somebody's interested. They can see me or call the golf, golf association and they'll put you them in touch with me. Can you give the hours of the golf club? Uh, the golf club opens at 7 o'clock. Um, and so if you're up early and you want a breakfast sandwich and coffee, come up to the clubhouse. You're more than welcome there. Uh, currently, during the summer hours right now, we're closing at 3. Uh, if we have enough business coming in and people are there, uh, the, the board would look at extending those hours, which is something I would hope they would do. Okay. And so I don't see a problem with having the golf company to come up here because it's open to all the residents. It's, it's open right? to all and residents. it's a voluntary. Yeah, no matter what right. kind of cart you got, whether it's electric or gasoline cart, uh, where you bought it from doesn't make any difference. If okay. you've got a cart and you want it inspected, uh, batteries checked in that, that's going to be June 8th. June 8th uh, from uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. Out in the West Parking Lot. Okay. Is there anybody else with any other comments? Debbie, one more from YouTube. Oh. Okay, uh, this was probably about gate century. The question was staff in the gatehouse needs more training. Uh, when are they going to receive more training? Well, when we can get the person out here, and he is going to be here on Friday to install the belt for 
the, the arm. And I know that was on the schedule to be spoke to him about regarding more training. And he is also needing to install some other parts for us at that point and some lights that are out on the other bar um, that he needs to do. So that is on the topics to discuss with him regarding more training for everybody. And this one is from Mike Green, Unit 6. Uh, I know the board's up to their eyeballs and stuff, but a few times I've heard the numbers related to the gates. Um, might behoove to go back and take a look at the actual purchases because part of the outbound gate purchases included the two barcode readers for the inbound and the outbound. So that's why the price looked so high because those were those are very expensive items and we had to replace both the inbound and the outbound. So and just a quick interjection on that. We had a the the reader per se. I'm really not in understanding the whole computer thing out there that's involved. We had a part. It was hardwired, would you say? Yeah. Hardwired. It was hit by electricity. It fried it up. We had a choice of spending twelve hundred for another hard wire or twenty two hundred for a wireless. We went with the wireless. So we did spend that amount of money and that is part of this uh, fix too, is to get that new part in here, which we've been waiting for a while for. But there was no sense in spending another 1200 and with storms coming and everything else, then we would be spending another 1200 then to have something wireless that we wouldn't have to worry about. So just to offset on Mike, we did make that decision that that was the best decision to go wireless. So, does anybody else have any other comments? No? All right, with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second, all in favor? Aye. Okay. The meeting is adjourned.